uh, we predicted this yesterday, and it was probably happening um, while we were on the air. But uh, the Republicans basically came out and said, we're not going to in any way facilitate a swapping of Dianne Feinstein from the Judiciary Committee to some other committee. As you know, she has supposedly been out now for weeks, uh, having been hospitalized with shingles. Very possibly uh, the case that she was hospitalized with shingles. Very possibly. Um, but it's also not the full story to say that's why she will not be returning in any type of timely fashion. She may not return, for all we know. Um she, it is well reported that she has uh, significant dementia. The Judiciary Committee, at any time, is obviously one of the key committees in our government. It is impossible to overstate the relevance of the Judiciary Committee to really... Anyone who um, cares about the growing Republican fascism, authoritarianism, theocracy, white Christian nationalism, whatever you want to call it, um, the, the Judiciary Committee is the one place where there is actually something effective can happen that is long term and lasting. Lifetime appointments to the federal judiciary, and it's being held up on the committee now. They cannot confirm anyone in the committee. There's a couple of, uh, of uh, nominees that have gotten out of committee. They'll be voted on on the Senate floor, but then it all dries up. And the reason why it dries up is because of the failure of Chuck Schumer, the failure of the California Democratic Party, the failure of Dianne Feinstein's staffers, the failure of Dianne Feinstein's family, the failure of maybe donors who have supported Dianne Feinstein in the past, the failure of Democratic establishment who is afraid of having a more progressive uh acting senator essentially appointed in california all of these people share in the the blame and the responsibility for this abject failure to be able to do the one thing the one thing that the democrats can effectively do right now in washington is to get more uh, judges on the federal judiciary. That is the one thing that they are there for, essentially, now. And they have failed. This is, and, and this, this has been coming down the pike for, uh, for a, at least in terms of the public. What was the first uh, reporting? Do we remember when that first story came out? If we have access to this information... If it is enough of a problem that it's being reported, and I think it was in the Washington Post, that Diane Feinstein doesn't even know where she is, then they have known this for longer than that. It is, it is really unbelievable. It looks like, uh, yeah, the San Francisco Chronicle had reported on it in April of last year. Okay, so it's been 12 months yep. since it was a big enough of a story that it was reported in the news. That means that every person working on the beat dealing with Dianne Feinstein's office, weighing against their burning all of their contacts in her office, right? I mean, because that's the way it works. If you write this, I'm no longer going to give you be a source of information for you and help you with your job as a reporter. So they've known about this in the Senate for a year, and now here we are. So she needs to resign. All those people who failed, who have failed, everyone who voted for Democrats in Senate races in Pennsylvania or Georgia or wherever it is, you have failed all those people. 
And it is your job now to get Dianne Feinstein or whoever is in charge of answering her phone or whoever it is that's in charge of, you know, her daily functions to get her to resign now. Because this is, this is just untenable. You're going to waste the final year and a half of appointing judges because you're all afraid that if you get to be 90 years old and have dementia or 89 years old and have dementia, or I don't care if you get dementia at age 60. This is not, you know, someone hosting a YouTube show. <laughs> this is someone whose who's presence or absence, I should say, is doing daily harm to the country. Every day in which that committee cannot do its work, we are losing one, two, three, five, 10, 15, 20. And God forbid there's an opening on the Supreme Court. And the Judiciary Committee is 50-50. Um, and... Um also, if with the Republicans kind of stone with the Republicans sort of stonewalling this, really the the actual easier path to rectify this situation would be for her to resign and for her for Gavin Newsom to appoint a successor without a doubt for it to just go through regular without a doubt freshman senator Gavin that person could be sitting on that committee in two weeks right, right. if she resigned today, or a new person would be sitting obviously on a, on a, on a committee. Not necessarily the 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 person who's appointed from California, but um, and listen to this though. I mean, listen to how much of the Republicans are enjoying this. I mean, of course, you hear Cornyn. Uh, these are controversial nominees. We're not going to get involved in that. Um, and understand, Feinstein herself, <laughs> Feinstein's staff issued a statement asking that she be swapped out with another Democrat so the panel can advance judges until she's able to return. I mean, this is just this is just absurd. Tom Tillis. I will vote against any attempt by Senate Democrats to temporarily replace Feinstein on the Judiciary Committee. Uh, Mitt Romney also rejected the proposal. This is just uh, delicious, though. And, I mean, the idea that Susan Collins is still in the Senate is just absurd. It's also a failure of, uh, of Chuck Schumer's uh, choices in, in terms of uh, who, who should be running in these Senate races. Susan Collins, Republican of Maine, said she, too, is against the swap. We put this quote up there because it's so astonishing. She's been an extraordinary senator. She's a friend of mine. During the past two years, there's been a concerted campaign to force her off the Judiciary Committee, and I think that's wrong, and I won't be a part of that. The request came from Feinstein herself. I mean... When I say Feinstein herself, I'm talking about the people who work around her who are letting her know where she is and what she should be signing. Does anybody remember when she like supposedly said, I'm not running for re-election? And she was immediately asked, like, wow, that's amazing. You're not running for re-election? I never said that. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. What? Oh, I guess I did. Well, okay. Meanwhile, Dick Durbin, she's obviously sensitive to the fact that her absence has an impact on the committee. Again, when the word she is in there, replace that with the staffers who are running her office or doing or, or, or whoever it is is in charge of these things. And he says, I'm not going to push her into any other decision. I think we can take care of the issue, do it very quickly. And I hope we can find 10 Republicans who will join us in that effort. Well, Dick Durbin's wrong. He was wrong. He was wrong. The ink wasn't even dry by the time he was proven wrong. Um, I, I mean, God help us if this is anything other than just him being polite in public and they're, uh, they're, they're working on, they've drafted a resignation letter and you know somebody's hand flying it to, uh, to San Francisco. Because this is just, it, it's, it's outrageous. And honestly, any single commentator or pundit 
or writer who claims uh, that there's some other agenda associated with this, that it's um, a misogynist or that it's um, or that it's, you know, a progressives trying to uh, force Gavin Newsom's hand is a liar. They are lying. They know what it's at stake here. It is putting more judges on the federal judiciary, period. End of story. I don't care who it is sitting on that committee. Honestly. I mean, I, I don't, I'm trying to come up with somebody who I care about that could be on the committee that if they were sitting on the committee, I'd be upset about it. Uh, Bernie Sanders, I don't care. If they, if, they, if they can't show up, get them off. Got a couple of sponsors today. I'm sorry. This is just, it, it just it's got me angry. I shouldn't have spent so much time on that. But I was pissed about it. Um, someone just wrote, uh, Feinstein's office phones don't either pick up or go straight to voicemail with no outgoing message. Nobody's there. I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised by that at all. Constituent services for the, the largest state in the country. <laughs> well, well, what are you going to do? Yeah, we, we won't pick up. That's fine. <laughs> Call someone else.